completely smooth. Absolutely smooth. And the engine is nicely warmed up so I could... Oh, wait a minute. Um, I wish there wasn't so much traffic because that felt a lot more responsive than how it used to feel. What's down this road? Is it just empty? I'm going to go down this road here just for the hell of it because... tripping balls here hey guys my name is Kern and welcome back to Octane Street the road to YouTube that never ends first and foremost I hope you guys are all excited for the new year 2021 we all know how bad 2020 is so I'm not even gonna talk about it but today in this video we're gonna be changing out the spark plugs and coils on my beautiful 2006 Mustang GT and now I'm not doing this for no reason my car was actually misfiring a little bit and having rough idles and if your car is misfiring the most usual cause of that is usually some bad spark plugs or coils uh, if not then you're gonna have to move on to a compression test etc etc and diagnose it with more technical means but this car is rough idling uh, it's intermittently and so it is misfiring again intermittently I'm fortunate enough that I still keep in contact with the seller of this vehicle so I was able to reach out to him and actually ask him when he had the spark plugs last changed out and it was actually a little over three years ago. So these plugs I think are definitely toast but we're going to find that out for sure once I actually take them out. But just in case I went ahead and purchased some brand new MSD blaster coils uh, to, to slap on as well since we're already having to take them off and I want to future proof, I want to future proof my vehicle in that sense. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pop the hood and then I'll show you guys all the tools that we have for today's install and hopefully everything goes well. But for now, let's get under that hood. Goddamn prop rods and a Mustang GT. All right, so we got the hood propped open. Let me go ahead and show you guys the tools and uh, equipment that we're gonna be using today. So I do have my half inch uh, ratchet here with a long extension. I do have my three types of spark plug sockets. And now what's special about these sockets is if you guys could see inside there, they actually have a little rubber boot inside there that actually holds onto the spark plugs when you're taking them out and putting them back in. So those are really, really good if you're ever changing spark plugs. Uh, I do have my quarter inch ratchet here as well, also with a long extension and a seven millimeter socket on the end. And honestly, that's hopefully everything we need. Um, if you guys also saw, we do have the MSD red blaster coil on plug kit here, uh, as well as our one piece design champion 7989 uh, spark plugs these are double platinum and are great i've read a lot of reviews on these spark plugs for this car of course you have some that say bad things uh, uh whatever the case is crack didn't last long only a month etc but that's with every spark plug and now i did a lot of research on which plugs will be the best for this car champion 7989s are the ones that i went with there's, there's a couple other brands that you could actually go with, such as Brisk Silver Racing Plugs and Auto Light Plugs. And there's also even a fourth brand that I was looking at. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. So yeah, make sure you guys do your research on which plugs are best for your vehicle, especially if you want to take care of it. If not, of course, you could just probably get something generic, but I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it because these are something that are play a very important and intricate role in your whole motor system. Uh, so you don't want to mess around with that. Again, I went with the Champion 7989s. Um, that's just where my research led me. Um, and of course, with that, we have some dielectric grease. I went with Permatex. You could pretty much go with any brand, I'm pretty sure, for dielectric grease. We're going to be using that on the coil on plug boots, as well as a little bit on the spark plug uh, porcelain portion. Um, and this right here, uh, if you guys are wondering, you might be wondering, hey, I've never seen anyone use a tool like that for spark plugs before. Well. That's probably because they haven't been working on a Ford. <laughs> um, so if you, again, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, if you know anything about the Fords of the early 2000s, all the way up until I think 2008 or nine or 10, um, Ford was actually using a two piece spark plug design. And so what would happen is when it came time to change the plugs, if you didn't remove them in a, a super specific way and be extra, extra precautious, what would happen in most cases is actually that the, parts, the spark plug would actually crack 
inside the head of the vehicle or the head of the motor okay and so it would fall in there and you would need a tool to extract the pieces otherwise it's just gonna be floating inside uh, your, your vehicle's motor and it could cause a lot of damage so it was a horrible design and it would happen because it was two pieces with a one-piece spark plug design the chance of that happening is almost completely un eliminated of course if you go at it like a gorilla and just you know try and rip the spark plug out it could still break but with a two-piece design the chances of that happening were based on what I read, like really, really high. But that's, I just wanted to explain to you guys what that tool was for. And of course, as you guys can probably tell, I'm recording alone today. So you guys are probably gonna be getting the head top POV footage uh, of me working on this. So we're gonna go ahead and get started right away on this install. The first thing I actually wanna do is use this little product here, if you guys could see it. And this is pretty much like compressed air. Like, you know, you guys know those little air duster canisters uh, that you use to clean your keyboard for your computer, etc. cetera. Uh, this is kind of the same thing, but it's an electrical variant. I do have a gamey and I, I was using those canisters quite often. So I went and picked up an electrical one and it, honestly, it does the job uh, for computers and components like that. It's not as powerful as compressed air, uh, but the good thing is it's rechargeable. I could use it forever and not have to worry about that. Uh, links to all the products I use in this video, guys, will be in the description below, um, assuming it's on Amazon. You guys could go ahead and click those links. Purchase it for yourself if you guys have any interest. They will be affiliate links, so if you guys wanna help support me, that's a great way to do so for the time being. But yeah, so I'm gonna be using this little guy, and what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be trying to get rid of all that dust if you guys can see it in there there is just a ton of dust built up so I'm gonna go ahead put you guys on my head <laughs> that sounds funny um, and yeah I'm gonna get to dusting it would be better if I had compressed air or a very powerful like little vacuum um, but we're gonna see how this does and hopefully it does the job well enough so that no debris or dust falls into the engine head while I'm taking off those coils and plugs let's get started that did its job and we got most of the most of the um, debris out I just wanted to get at least the major major particles out of there so as to not damage anything all right so we have our seven mil on our quarter inch ratchet with a long extension and we're just gonna be going for these coil on plug bolts here but first we're gonna go ahead and this PCV fucking hose is in the way um, actually, speaking of my PCV hose, which is right here, connecting from the intake manifold to the valve covers, uh, if you guys could actually see, it's leaking. And that's something I only discovered after um, deciding to change my spark plug. So that's why it's good to look under your hood every now and then, get an idea of how your engine bay looks when everything's okay. So that way you can easily spot leaks like that. Um, and this usually means that I need a new PCV valve and possibly the hose as well. Um, but yeah, it shouldn't be leaking from here like that at all. So definitely something I need to also change out Might do a video on that as well But these connectors are pretty simple you press the clip and then pull straight up And I'm kind of gonna just work one by one here. I kind of want to get the rhythm of it And so I just want to crack this Nice and slow to not strip the bolt And then we'll just kind of do it by hand so Now this is my very first time I've owned this car for three months uh, usually if you want to do a proper inspection when you first buy a vehicle, that's a good idea. Um, this is my very first time actually taking these coils off or, um, yeah, so uh, it's going to be my first time seeing the condition. Always want to look at your bolts. These look to be in good condition as well. Thank God for that. Let's go ahead and keep everything organized here. Put that little guy there. And then for this... <coughs> Kind of just want to get your fingers in there underneath a little bit and pull straight up towards you thank god uh i think the previous owner might have used some some dielectric grease when changing these out because this came out like a beauty and the boot did not rip to my knowledge okay so this is our first little coil on plug right here um Honestly speaking, it looks like it's in good condition, like nothing's wrong with them. So 
and you can definitely see a little bit of dielectric grease there I'm not sure where the cam camera angle is I'm sorry in advance if it's a poor angle I'm hoping it's good uh, but you can see that he used a little bit of dielectric grease right here um, which is great you definitely uh, just want a little bit here uh, just so that the spark plug seats nicely and it, it does that nice seal um, and now we need to get the spark plug so you guys could probably see it down there I really don't like all the dust and debris that's hanging around there but as long as I'm careful as long as no gusts of wind blow uh, I should be okay so I think now's a good time to actually talk about the spark plugs and like I said I went with champion 7989 double platinum here and now these did come pre-gapped for me uh, you always want to make sure you check the gapping of your spark plugs you always want to make sure that you check that because uh, every car has its own manufacturer spec that they want this little gap to be at and that's what this little tool here is for it's a really neat little tool Let me go ahead and get it out for you guys this is called the gapper spark plug gauge uh, I'll leave a link to this of course in the description um, really neat little tool only costs about $15 for this little guy it's like a little bigger than you know typical coin of some sort um, and pretty much all you do I mean these aren't recommended per se for double platinum plugs especially if they have a little piece on the, the end of the electrode there um, of sticking out uh, but pretty much you just put it inside here and lightly 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 gently rub it across until it kind of gets stuck and as you guys can see there it's at 0.41 um, and this car uh, 05 to early 06 Mustangs actually call for a spark plug gap of 0.04 to 0.050 okay so anything in that range should be good but what i want to let you guys know is the smaller the gap typically the smaller the gap the better so since i have a range of 0.4 or 0.04 to 0.05 i'm going to keep it closer to that 0.04 so that um you know it gets it gets the perfect and great amount of spark so that it it completely dissolves all the all the gas pretty much and combusts fully making less uh less uh grime build up essentially and has a greater you know fuel efficiency and stuff like that so um i could have explained that a lot better but uh this isn't necessarily a tutorial video i'm just kind of showing you guys what i'm doing i don't need anti seize on these plugs these are nickel plated so uh you can check your manufacturer of your spark plugs ask if they need uh anti seize or not these do not um which is why you don't see anti seize anywhere here but what we are going to do um, and just to let you guys know, these did come pre-gapped, but I did have to adjust two or three of them, okay? I already checked them uh, in my house because uh, it's pretty cold outside, so I already did that beforehand. So always make sure you check the gap of your spark plug using a tool like the gapper. All right, so we got our 3 8 set up here, long, or medium extension, 5 8 spark plug uh, socket on the end. And let's go ahead and try and get our first spark plug out. Now I'm going to be uh, as careful as I can. Obviously, I, the owner... Uh, told me what he put in here. He said he think he believes his champions, but I want to just uh, be safe just in case and actually I'm gonna need a longer extension. So that's great Be right back Ta-da! We're back with our new setup and honestly guys it is absolutely freezing out here I wish I wish I wish I wish that some sunlight would appear uh, And yeah, my hands are just absolutely frozen. I don't even have gloves and let's go ahead and Make sure that this socket there we go so we grabbed the, the spark plug there, and now I'm just gonna gently... Oh, it's bound there pretty tight. I'm trying to crack it. Oh, there we go, we cracked it. Okay, and now we just kinda gotta get it out. So it was on there pretty tight. Um, if the previous owner used anti-seize on these plugs, then there's a possibility of over-torquing them, which you definitely don't want. It puts more strain on your, your block uh, your engine head and it can actually cause warping once the, the motor uh, warms up um, so yeah let's go ahead and get these guys out and see how our first plug is actually looking and now the beauty of spark plug sockets god the first time I used one I was so ecstatic because they actually just pull the plug out for you It's still in there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, my. I mean, 
it definitely looks like there's a lot of anti seas here uh, which is not good because you only want anti seas on the actual threads these are champion I can see the logo under there they do look different than the ones I got here as you guys can see oh that's because this is my boot for my damn socket I'm so silly this is the boot for the actual socket it's just so cold that it just freaking came out so I need to put that back in there and hope it stays but yeah so they are the same plugs champion 7989 beautiful so same plugs definitely has a lot of anti seize uh, previous owner definitely used a little bit too much and yeah but these definitely needed changing I'm very happy with that let's go ahead and actually check the gap on them because I'm curious to see how the old gap is you can see the electrode there it even looks you know worn out oh my god okay so the gap is actually still still pretty good <laughs> the gap is still exactly where I have the new plug so that's great oh my god my hands are freezing um, but yeah so we're gonna slap the first plug in and honestly I might do most of it off camera just shut the camera down uh, just so I can speed through it because I want to show you guys at least one and we're just pretty much doing the same thing for all the other ones uh, my hands are absolutely freezing again it's negative I think two or negative one uh, very very cold but we're going to get our new spark plug and we're gonna put it in and I'm very excited to okay so it's on the little boot thing there and now we just drop it in you see how it's not falling out that's the beauty of spark plug um, spark plug uh, sockets okay and now we just want to I want to start it by hand. Okay, I just want to make sure that we're still good. Okay, so let's go ahead and start this step with my hand here. Now, tightening spark plugs uh, it could be a little bit sketch. Uh, I definitely recommend looking up how to properly tighten spark plugs. I'm not gonna uh, try to give advice on here because every car is different, spark plugs are different. If you use anti seize or not, it's gonna be different. Um, but these threads definitely feel like they have some kind of gunk on them. It's not turning as smoothly, as smoothly as I'd like. Um, but we'll see here. So you wanna go to there and then just do a little problem isn't it because I have my uh... man why do things always have to not go as planned god damn it the actual little uh, boot inside my socket I think because it's so cold it just came off uh, and these tools were sitting in my car um, so yeah I have to I have to find a solution to that and then come back to it all right I'll let you guys know what I do to fix this issue I might have to super glue the boot into the socket I'm not sure if it's I'm not sure if that'll work but I think I might have to try and do that because as of right now it keeps getting stuck uh, on the actual spark plug now it's good that it's doing its job but it needs to stay on the socket as well so I'll let you guys know what I end up doing all right guys so I just got the spark plug in no thanks to my my spark plug socket um, I tried to figure out something I even tried using a little uh, magnet to lower the spark plug in which I thought would work but then once you lower it in the magnet still holding on to the spark plug and there's no way to really disconnect it so unfortunately that idea did not work um, so I kind of just held it as far in as I can and had to kind of plop it down a little bit uh, it tightened okay uh, I, I believe it's tightened 100% uh, and properly there's no harm in double checking and so yeah, so, yep, she's good. 
and now we're actually going to be putting on our first coil on plug which we already greased up as you guys saw earlier and yep the grease is still there and fine and now it's just about a matter of lining it up and kind of just plopping it down as well uh, i can't remember exactly how i took it out i think it was like this man these ones seem a little bit bigger but nothing we can't fit in here that's what she said oh, man there's hardly any space to pop it down without getting any okay all right guys sorry about that my camera actually died here but while i was charging on my gopro inside and also warming up my fingers which were pretty close to frostbite it felt like um i went ahead and actually put dielectric grease on all of the coils and all of the porcelain parts of the spark plugs here so if I go ahead and pick one up and show you guys, you'll see that it's nicely, lightly greased. I didn't get any grease on the spring inside itself. I just put grease right there on the, um, right on the inside of the, the little boot there uh, so that everything seats nicely. Um, as for my spark plug socket, let me grab it here. Uh, I tried to push down the little rubber boot and grommet that's inside there that actually holds on the spark plug. I tested it in the house, it seemed to have worked. Um, so I'm going to try it again. If not, I'll just do it without the, the socket, the special socket, uh, because it's still possible. So I'm just going to try and crank this out really quick. I'm going to put you guys back in that last angle that I had you guys at. And I'm just going to try and crank them out. And hopefully we don't run into any more issues. So let's get straight to business. I'm going to go ahead and set you guys down right here. Just like that. <clears throat> let's go ahead and turn this like this just to give us maximum room and let's get started on the next one okay i'm gonna unplug the coil It's always hard to unplug stuff when your fingers are cold. There we go. And now, let's hope this, let's hope this bolt is uh, nice and friendly with us here. Not too hard to crack. Oh, it was very easy to crack this one actually. All right, go ahead and get it out. Yep, you can go ahead and close yourself if that works. Okay. Bolt is in great condition as well. Stick that on over there. And now we're just gonna pull back up on this coil like that. Popped off really nice and smooth. That's that dielectric grease coming into play right there for sure okay and our second coil is off nice and quick um, I'll go ahead and show you guys a close-up of all the coils after I take them all out but like I said I just want to kind of speed through this just because it's so cold and now we're gonna use our spark plug socket and hope that it works All right, reach right in there, crack it. You know what, let's crack it like this. Okay, so these spark plugs were definitely on pretty tight. Um, the first one was also a little bit tough to take off and I'm obviously trying to put as little pressure as possible so that I don't strip it or crack it in the, the block. Um, but yeah, so. And we got it out just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and lean in here so you guys can see it a little better. Um, 
yeah this one looks just as beaten up let's hope it doesn't take the the rubber with it please 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 oh we're good baby we're good our spark plug sockets doing the work again definitely too much anti seize again um, but like I said I'm gonna show you guys all that stuff at the end since we went ahead and got that out and since we already greased them up we are good to just put these bad boys in doesn't fall out that's the beauty of the spark plug socket when it wants to work And then you just want to gently tighten it, making sure that you're getting it in there properly. I definitely don't like how um, the condition of the heads, I mean the condition of the threads in the head, they don't feel, they don't feel like they're, they're uh, clean which I'm hoping isn't gonna cause me issues because it's not like super bad. As you guys can see, I could turn it. It's just that it, it likes to stutter every now and then, which I could tell is the threads and I'm trying to just be gentle with it. Okay, so that's the good spot. And then I'm just gonna crank it just a tiny bit there. And honestly, it looks good. Rubber still in the socket. And I'm gonna throw the new coil on now and we already have it lubed. Already got her lubed up and now we're just slapping it in. Uh, which angle did I? I think I took it out at this angle. I'm just gonna try and follow the same angle that I come out because that seems to be the best angle to approach it. Just need to clear that and then we can pop it in. So I do want to show you guys this angle. I'll probably show you guys for one of the last ones. Uh, because I want you guys to see what I see. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to get a good shot for you guys because it's dark inside here. And there's not much space to just shove a camera, so. That looks to be about right. And now I just need that little bolt. My seven mil. And now we're just gonna Line it up and get the tightening. Okay. I'm just gonna turn it just a little bit here. There we go. And now that's in nice and secure. Give it a little wiggle, a little shake, shake and bake. And let's plug her back in. And now we have two of them done. Just like that so um, I'm gonna get these ones out even faster hopefully and yeah here for the time-lapse Alright guys, so I just finished up here on the left side, the driver's side of the vehicle, and as you guys can see, the brand new coils look absolutely sick under the hood. You can see them from further back, and if we go to this side, you'll see the, the old stalkers there. 
no color you can barely see it it just blends in with the rest of the <laughs> underneath the hood but with those red i'm standing a good foot away from the car and i could see them all the way from down here they look really cool uh the only thing my only concern so far with the install is the tightening of the spark plugs um i'm hoping i'm, I'm tightening i'm hoping that i'm tightening them correctly uh i'm doing it to his hand tight and then doing it just a little bit more that's what usually people say if you're not going to use a torque wrench um so i'm hoping that that's good because that's what i've been doing um but yeah i'm gonna go tackle the other side and then uh we'll start the car up hope everything runs okay and then i'll go ahead and head inside and show you guys all the old coils and plugs and we'll talk a little bit about the install so yeah all right guys still here in the negative degree weather but we finally banged him out thankfully the other side went a lot smoother but just to show you guys we got all four on that side we got our old coils and plugs here and then we got our four installed on this side so everything is as it should be thankfully my uh spark plug socket actually worked for the rest of the uh seven or six spark plugs thankfully um so right now is the moment of truth we're gonna start it up and hope that i don't hear um the misfiring that's been happening previously again it's intermittent so i'm gonna have to drive on on the car for a while before i fully know but I'm hoping this solves that issue and I completely forgot to mention but hopefully I already showed it to you guys some footage that I had of how the car sounded when it would be rough idling because um, I remember recording it several times it is officially take number three you guys think I'm playing when I say it's absolutely freezing out here my camera's battery only lasts a couple seconds it seems like uh, even though I've been fully charging it so let's go ahead finally hop in the car and start it up I did wait until my battery was charged again so that I could start it up with you guys uh, for the very first time. I'm hoping it goes good. Um, and I was really eager to do it beforehand when the camera died for the second time, but uh, you guys have, for those of you that stuck around to this part of the video, I owed it to you guys to wait for you guys uh, and do it together. So let's go ahead and hop inside. And man, I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm pretty sure we did everything by the book and it's a little bit of a mess in here. I'll go ahead and put you guys down. And now, before we start it up, there's another problem that I'm gonna show you guys and we're actually gonna go for a little bit drive once the car warms up. Uh, but I'll show you guys that in a minute. So let's go ahead and start it up. Hopefully you guys have good audio. started up fine I don't feel any shaking which is good and this is all after I haven't driven the car for about four or four or five days so uh, the car I'm glad it started up fine uh, with no issues that's always good and I want to pay attention to the idle how it's idling and how it's uh, gonna warm up Yeah, it feels good. It feels really good so far. I'll go ahead and show you guys. So of course, because the engine is super cold, we are going to have to let it sit for a little bit, uh, which is good. Let's me, you know, see how it idles and see how the car warms up, if it's proper and whatnot. Um, but so far it seems really good. Definitely seems, it definitely seems smoother than before. Yeah, like I don't feel any roughness at all. It makes, sorry, I keep pausing because like it makes me realize even more how how bad the idle was before actually. Cause this feels super, super, super smooth. Whereas before it would be a, like the car, it don't, it'd feel like almost like it's misfiring every time I start it up. And there would even be a code that, um, I can't remember the code, but it's pretty much uh, misfire within the first thousand revolutions of the vehicle. So misfiring on startup. Um, so I'm going to scan the car later on to see if it still has that code. It shouldn't. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to let it warm up. And then to show you guys that little other issue that I'm going to need to fix, uh, we look to my shifter here. Okay. And if I put it in reverse, look how hard it is. Oh, actually it was not bad. Usually it's a lot more stiff than that, uh, to actually put in reverse. But right now it's actually doing pretty good. Um, but yeah, keep warming up and I'll catch you guys. In a couple seconds 
All right, guys, so hopefully th this angle is okay. Uh, we are going to be driving the Mustang. It is nice and warmed up now. Um, and yeah, let's see how it drives. Uh, I'm actually very excited because uh, I just... Okay. I'm just very excited. Uh, it's always exciting when you put any kind of, um, you know, replacement part on or mod, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm actually going to go grab lunch right now. Uh, I think after freezing, I earned a little something something. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's go ahead and see how she's driving with the new plugs and coils. Okay, she's definitely driving good. We're gonna need to drive it for a little while to find out if it's driving better and we need to... It's nice and smooth. I think we did good. I think, I think everything's working fine. I'm pretty sure I'd notice a lot of bucking by now if, you know, one of them were messed up or if it was misfiring. Um, but I don't want to speak too soon yet. God, there's so much corrosion on my brakes. I can feel it from all the rain and snow and then the cold. God bless Canada, am I right? But so far, so good. No complaints. Um, definitely feels... It's, at, at least it's not worse. I don't notice much of a difference other than it's not worse. Um... Again, because it wasn't always uh, misfiring before, it was intermittently. So I had times where it was, it would just be fine. But this, it just feels, the best word I could use is smooth. It feels really smooth. I mean, when I come at a stop sign and I stop, I feel almost like the car is not even moving at all. Like it feels really, really stable in that sense. And uh, yeah, definitely, definitely, um, I want to I want to say fix the issue that I was having because driving it now I noticed the difference in, in the little things like you know being at a stop sign um, because even that just feels smoother unless it's again all placebo because you know these parts did cost a pretty penny but I'm pretty sure it's, it's not placebo and it's actually doing something um, go ahead and stop here at the stop sign as well completely smooth absolutely smooth and the engine is nicely warmed up so i could oh wait a minute um i wish there wasn't so much traffic because that felt a lot more responsive than how it used to feel what's down this road is it just empty i'm gonna go down this road here just for the hell of it because tripping balls here I'm barely putting my foot down and the car just wants to go I'm barely putting my foot down and the car is accelerating like like never before I need to turn around and do that again because I know I haven't driven my car in four days but you don't forget how your car drives in that short of a time you know what I mean let me go ahead and turn around here. And one of the things that uh, installing performance coils like these should do is it should give you a much better throttle response as well as better fuel economy, um, which is just a win-win. Of course, they are pretty expensive and they don't necessarily give you horsepower, but the way the power is delivered is supposed to be different. And honestly, fuck this is so different this is way different i'm not going crazy i am not i'm not going crazy this way different oh my god
god. I mean, I can't, I can't, I, I can't, I can't say I can't see how because we're gonna take a look at my old, I'm getting like goosebumps because of how different it feels and how I just wanna fucking drive until my gas is empty, but, um, it feels so different and it feels so happy, it feels so excited to, to get a little bit of throttle. And the old spark plugs and coils were, they looked okay, but the spark plugs definitely were pretty toast. And now that it has some brand new ones with some performance coils, um, it's just happy now. It feels happy. And at first I thought maybe I'm going crazy. I haven't driven the car or whatever, but 100% different. It is almost night and day. It feels as though I got a, some, a light tune on the car. And I guess that's why they call this little maintenance a tune-up because it could bring your car back to life and The car feels brand new. It's almost like I, I did a whole performance uh, Modification to it when really it's just some uh, plugs and coils So I reached my destination. I'm excited to drive back home. It's a very short drive as you guys saw but it feels happy my car feels happy and they say happy wife, happy life, but hey, happy staying, happy, I don't know. I was trying to think of something on the spot. To, that would have been nice if I thought of something. Happy staying, happy, I don't know. You guys think of something in the comments and let me know in the comment section right below that like button. Um, we're going to head back to the house and we're going to take a closer look at the old stuff that came out of the car. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about my experience driving on my way back home. Catch you guys there. It's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush.